Welcome to my channel. This is Dr. Joel Njovu from Zambia. Uh, I want to introduce to you about our company and uh, I want to share about health, especially under digestion system. Uh, I'm working under Njovu Health Supplements. Njovu Health Supplements is a, a healthy supplementary company providing organic products. That nourish, comfort, and ground you to live with active wellness and prosperity. Our mission is to help people achieve their goals and live a health fulfilling life by providing health products and services. And our vision is to raise great entrepreneurs who are inspired and passionate enough to help others by creating wealthy through our innovation and uh, creative activities. Now, the most important thing I want to share to you is the health part that I've come with to you. I want you to learn more about the digestion system, which is so important. Someone will say, I have suicidal thoughts, I have gases, I have ulcers, I have fibroids, I have, I'm diabetic or I am hypertensive. Pals or hemorrhoids, kidney stones or kidney failure, arthritis, short sighted, toothache, fever, I'm asthmatic, I've heart problem, sinuses. All these you have mentioned, what we are going to discuss now, you have the answer for everything you have, even when, whatever I've never mentioned. Whatever is in your mind or your health condition, what we are going to discuss has the answer for it. What you should remember or know is that whether you are sick or you are okay, diseases never come without a cause. If you are sick, remember that there is a cause of that problem. For sure, there are some people who inherit diseases from their parents. But... It's not the disease of their parents, but we, com we contribute to the hereditary factor that our parents did, that we too are doing it now. In respect, it's not the disease of our parents we inherited, but it is the same method that our parents used to do that we are doing, or the lifestyle that our parents used to do that we do now. I'm saying it is either the cooking method our parents used to, that they used to eat certain food that we are also eating, that they used to live a certain lifestyle that we are living to. That's why that disease has also come to me. And the healing concept is that how in treating of diseases, we must treat the root cause of the problem, not just the suppression or the symptom that has come because of the certain problem that is developing in our body. So I will begin uh, with the digestion system. The digestion system is the movement of food from the mouth to anus. There are many diseases that one may suffer under the digestion system. In fact, I may say all non-transmitted diseases begins from the digestion tract. Uh, there are two types of diseases. There are communicable diseases. These communicable diseases are the transmitted disease. They are diseases that can be transmitted from one person to another. If you are a couple, the wife has, then can transfer it to a husband, like gonorrhea, syphilis, these different types of infection, chlamydia, and so on, so mentioned. And what you should have in mind is that the drugs were made for communicable diseases, because these diseases that we have now, like diabetes, sugar, there were no uh, medicine and there were no disease, such diseases in some time back. 
And the second disease is what we call non-transmitted or non-communicable. These are diseases that cannot be transferred from one person to another. Even if you are a couple, if a man or your husband is suffering from that disease, the wife may not be able to take, cannot, in fact, I may say cannot uh, transfer it to, from a man to a woman. It cannot. If you have sugar or diabetes, it's yours. If you have uh, 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 you have ulcers, it's yours, you will suffer alone. If you have gas, you will suffer alone, you won't transfer it to anyone. If you have uh, this uh, uh, hypertensive or BP, you will suffer alone. You, and these are the threatening diseases. These are the highly uh, killing people, diseases around the whole world. They begin from the food we eat. It begins in our body itself from the food we eat. Uh, due to lifestyle we have now, like smoking, huh? like uh, alcohol, different habits that we do that contribute to these diseases which are called non-transmitted. Let's continue. So the digestion system, it begins from a mouth, so-called alimentary canal, and it ends at the anus. The food must be masticated or chewed by the teeth and jaws to reduce the size of the food. And during this time, there are enzymes that will be produced, or I mean there are some juices which will be produced, so-called enzymes. These enzymes, they help to speed up the chemical reaction. Once we are chewing something in our mouth, there will be saliva amylase that will be produced by the saliva gland. It will help to, to convert the starch into maltose. If the food is not chewed properly, or if the food is not digested properly, one will begin to suffer from what we call ingestion or stomach pain. And uh, may also uh, cause problems like absorption difficulties. There are three uh, enzymes that the body will produce once we eat food, and these three enzymes I will mention and I will uh, uh, give an example what it does to the body and why they are important and how it can cause problem to our health. The first enzyme, the body will produce what we call uh, pepsin, and this pepsin it will help to uh, to pro it will help to break down the proteins into amino acid, so-called peptide. The other second uh, enzyme that the body will produce is called uh, what we call mucus. These mucus, they help us to, uh, uh, to, to moisturize the food we have eaten. The third enzyme that the body is producing is what when we, the, we eat food is what we call hydrochloric acid. This hydrochloric acid, it mixes the food to make it easy for digestion system and to make it easy for the food for us to swallow that food we have eaten. So now, if we eat our less food like bubgums, uh, sweets, fritters, which means we are causing problem to our body because once we eat those, we are chewing those bubgums, the body will produce the hydrochloric acid and uh, it will find less or it will find nothing to mix. So as a result, it will cause stomach pain. And as a result, it can also, that hydrochloric acid produced when we are chewing, it will go directly into the stomach and it will begin to burn the stomach membrane, which may result in ulcers. That's why it's not advisable to chew sweets, to chew bubblegums, to eat this small, small, small food. You are bringing danger to your health. And these are the same lifestyle that may cause problems to our body. So now let's discuss some of the most common diseases that fall under digestion system. The bit that we are talk, we shall talk is what we call constipation. So constipation is the accumulation of waste from the digestion system, or the accumulation of waste in the colon or the large intestine. One of the causes the most common cause of constipation, one is sitting for long period of time. If you sit for long period of time, you will be constipated, especially
Malaysia are the drivers and uh, the office workers. Even standing for a long period of time may also cause constipation. These are the most causes of constipation. And these people may, there are most people who suffer from constipation. I said drivers, office workers, people who stand for a long period of time. The second uh, cause of the uh, constipation is diet. Diet is the most and the first cause of constipation. So I have a figure here that will help us to understand how uh, digestion system or how diet cause constipation. So under the figure here you can see uh, there is a, a transverse colon then uh, this side there is a descending colon and uh, this side there is a ascending colon and down here there is somewhere where it's written a uh, uh, food that are uh, sticking to the coronary tract or the food that are sticking to the large intestine or the colon so the issue is that uh, uh, when we that when we eat food when it comes to diet when we eat food that does not have fibers it slows down the movement of food or it slows down the peristasis or in normal term i can say it slows down the movement of food from the mouth to anus so what will happen is that when we eat this food high refined food or junk food like uh, white stuffs like white bread uh, white meal which is breakfast food with sodas uh, uh, red meat all these will cause constipation because they do not have fibers so one may wonder because i've mentioned to say uh, red meat so and one may have question to say how does red meat or how does meat contribute to constipation so you can see here when we eat food when we eat meat it takes about seven days for it to be digested in our body or it takes seven days for it to be fully removed or fully digested in our body so you will find that today I have eaten food red meat meat maybe after three days i've eaten red meat again or three even four times a week so what do you think happened to the first you eaten what do you think happened to the second you eaten before you eat the third in in the same week so it will it will be sticking it will be in the colon it won't be fully digested that red meat no within the whole week until fully seven days that's when it will be completely eliminated from the as colon so what will happen is that it will stick, it will be there under the process of digestion system to be eliminated, to be fully digested. So if I've eaten today, again, after two days I've eaten, it will begin to accumulate. As it accumulates again, it will cause problems. I've eaten today, you eat another day again, and then those they are begin to accumulate and as the result, it may also cause what we call uric acid in our body and it goes to the bloodstream that now it will begin it will go direct into the joints joints part of our body and deplete the synovial fluids and may cause what we call arthritis that's one of the most causes again for arthritis because of eating too much of red meat regularly especially when it's not fully digested you may have constipation because of the accumulation of red meat in your body and that red meat again will cause uh, 
uric acid because of, of, of too much accumulation that may affect your bones as well. So that's how the red meat causes uh, constipation. And so it's uh, something which is so much important because as you can see here, when we eat something like uh, shima, for example here in Zambia we eat shima, when we eat something like shima, so it goes into the colon, I mean the stomach, it goes into the small intestines, lastly it will come now in the large intestine. Now where the most problems comes is in the large intestine. That's where the problem comes. You can see the large intestine, it has this, it's love. You can see it's love, it's moving like this, it's love. Why it's love? It's because it's squeezing. Once it is squeezed, it gets nutrients, and it squeezes, it gets vitamins, it squeezes, it gets everything until it releases the waste through the anus. So now, when there's this stuff here, which are sticking now to the coronary tract, this may be there for years in one's body. And once it's there for years in one's body, it may cause more harms. One, it will begin to cause what we call bad breath. It will, because this will ferment inside, and once it ferments, it will cause now the bad breath coming from the colon. It may also cause what we call uh, the gases, because this stuff will ferment, and as it ferment, it will begin now to cause what we call uh, it will rot inside and it will produce the bad heat that will begin to heaten up the coronary tract here. And that heat will be so bad, will be even coming to the chest and it will be called gases. These again may also produce what we call um, bacteria. The bacteria may move into the stomach and begin to heaten up the stomach membrane, which may result in ulcers. It also may produce also what we call acid. This acid may begin to burn the coronary membrane here, which may also result to ulcers. Though ulcers may also come due to uh, may come due to drinking too much of uh, alcohol. That's the main reason again for ulcers. So we are poisoning our body, we are poisoning ourselves because of the food we eat which does not have fibers. And by leaving our colon so dirty in ourselves, we are causing more problems. Especially we find that when one breath, even just when one speak, there will be so much bad uh, smell coming from there. Just know that, that this person is constipated. What you need is to clean the colon. Clean the colon, detoxify yourself, make sure you are clean whenever you are. You know, you can try different uh, uh, brushes to brush your teeth, maybe to see, maybe you don't brush. You do that, but the issue is that the colon is too dirty. You know, the condition may not be too serious, not until it goes now to the bloodstream. What you should know is that all part of the body, they need the food we eat, they need the, the oxygen. And the, the, the digestion system uh, is more like a, a field where we grow maize. When we grow maize, we need to transport that maize from, where, from the field to house or home where you live so that you may begin to benefit from that, you eat from it. Now, it's the same way when we eat food, we need blood to transmit uh, nutrients from the food we have eaten to all part of the body so that the body benefit from it. Now, I call the, uh, the cardiovascular system as the Ministry of Transportation because it's the one that transport blood, that transport food through the blood nutrients through the blood and oxygen through the blood, the white blood cells and the red blood cells, all those they work together to carry out the oxygen, food and nutrients and vitamins, whatever we've eaten, into all part of the body. But now the problem is that we now 
the food that the body is the, the blood is carrying the food coming from the digestion system if the colon is dirty which means you are self poisoning yourself you are killing yourself the blood is will be also dirty because the blood is also made from the food we eat through the bone marrow and if the blood is dirty all part of the body will be ill because it's feeding on something which is rotten it's feeding on something which is dirty it's feeding on something which is fermented so what this means in effect is that Fermentation gives rise to a process of what we call self-poisoning or self-auto-intoxication uh, and auto-intoxication. Let's imagine our colon to become uh, something which has a concentration of high harmful bacteria in our colon ourselves. Eh? Some things which are highly and harmful uh, 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 concentration in our body we are killing ourselves because of the food we eat which do not have fibers especially if one is constipated the the toxin in our body uh, the things which has a high concentration of high bacteria half bacteria in our body will begin to travel now into blood the bloodstream and once it travels into the bloodstream, it will affect all part of the body now. It will be, get, uh, will be affected and uh, many forms of sickness will come now. Uh, uh, it, it, it will come now because of the dirty colon. Uh, all part of the body system will be affected and will be weak and will be sick. So now, first of all, because the blood is loaded with toxin what will happen is that now you are affecting the liver that is the work of the liver to eliminate toxin so the liver will be affected if you are suffering from the liver and you watch what I'm telling you now what we are learning now remember the first thing you should do is to detoxify your colon because that could be the main cause for the liver problem you are having. You are affecting the liver because the liver is it work. So the liver will be overworking always in your body. And secondly, uh, what will happen now to these uh, organs of elimination, being the bladder, the lungs, the skin, as well as the boils, will be now uh, seriously burdened because it will need to expel the toxin from the body so it will be burdened that's why you will find that one now will begin to suffer from what we call bladder infection bladder problems and you may even have stones on the bladder failing to urinate i've seen some people with that condition the lungs will be affected because now it will be having problems. The skin again will also have problems like pimples. You know, some people with pimples just on their face, they can try different soap and so on. Just ask them their digestion system. If they have the digestion system problem, just know you can tell sometimes by their face through the pimples, you find more pimples all over. Just know that this person is suffering from the problem of colon. Or the colon is dead in short uh, as well as the boils who have problem like stomach problem bloating gases all over some abdominal abdominal pain and so on will be affected because of the same problem and we begin to have problems like these symptoms will begin to develop symptoms like sneezing coughing huh? sinuses huh? Sneak, uh, skin lashes fever, diarrhea, and so on. How can uh, constipation cause gas? Now, I want to show you how the uh, constipation can cause gases. As you can see here, there are some stuff which are sticking to the coronary tract. So, the, once we eaten something, the, body, the food that we have eaten, it will begin to move. 
from the stomach here, somewhere here, inside here, the stomach, and then it will move from the stomach, it will begin to move, and it will come to the last stage of the colon. Of the colon. In the colon, you can see it's love, like this, it's love. It has this, something like this, it's love. It's love, right? You can see it's love the way it is. Why it's love? It's because it's squeezing. Once it's squeezed, it gets the food, the nutrients that the body needs, and then the waste is begin to move, going into the anus. So it squeezes, then it gets the food, the nutrients, the vitamins, it goes, and then the stuff is continue moving, it continues squeezing, squeezing, it's getting the nutrients, getting the nutrients. Now, if the food, there are some things which are sticking to the coronary tract here, as you can see, then this stuff will begin to ferment inside. It will begin to ferment this stuff. Once it ferments, it, it will produce what we call a bad heat that will begin to heat up the whole coronary tract here. And that, that heat now is the one that will be called gases because there are some stuff which are sticking to the coronary tract and those stuff will now ferment or rot. Once it's rot, it will produce the bad heat that will begin to heat up the coronary tract. That's how gases mostly begins. There are also some people who have what we call a bad breath. The bad breath sometimes it begins from the colon because of the dead colon there inside. The storage, there is some, some storage inside our colon because there are some stuff which are not move for a long period of time. So now these stuff, as I said, they have rotten and they have fermented. So they are producing the bad uh, smell that will begin to come from the mouth. You know, this is a, a coronary tract. It goes from the mouth to the anal. So once someone speaks, because there are some forces which is coming from the, uh, our stomach here. So that smell will be coming from the stomach up to the mouth and one who have also what we call bad breath. If one has bad breath, if you have bad breath, don't forget to clean the colon. The colon is so important. Don't forget to clean the colon. Clean the system. And if you are suffering from constipation, this is what happens because of those food that you eat, the white food, the white stuff, the white bread, eh, white sugar, a white meal like breakfast, all those soda food, and eh, all those they will con they will cause constipation and it will cause problem. And now this what will happen now? I also mentioned about the ulcers. So how can ulcers come? Is that now there are some when something is sticking here and they are fermented or they have rot inside our stomach. What will happen is that now there are some bacteria that will come and it will move into the into the uh, it will move into the stomach and now what will happen is that it will begin those those uh, those uh, uh, those bacteria now will begin to eat up the the stomach membrane and it will cause ulcers and apart from the uh, bacteria, there are also some things that will, the, the acid that will be produced from the fermented stuff or the lot stuff, and this acid will begin now to, to do what? It will begin to, to burn the stomach membrane and it will cause what we call ulcers, and you will have problems. Uh, now, the problem we have is that. Some people when they have constipated, maybe the whole day they didn't they didn't go to the toilet. They have missed the toilet the whole day. They feel they are men. Huh? I'm so strong myself. I'm strong. I can't go to the toilet the whole day. I'm strong. No, you are not strong. You are killing yourself. You are killing yourself. You know, it's something which is so bad. You know, when the food remains uh, in our system or in the colon for the period of time. It's dangerous. It will begin to uh, putrefy, eh? or or it will ferment, or it will rot inside our colon. You know, when this thing happens, the situation may not be serious, not until uh, 
this accumulation become more in our body. You know, it may not be serious, not until much of the poison now we are putting on our body uh, travels or moves into our bloodstream. What this means in effect is that patient gives rise to what we call the process of self poisoning called an auto intoxication. Intoxication, you are poisoning yourself. You know, from the digestion system, once we eat something, it's more like we have grown. For example, we have grown maize. So when we grow maize, we have to take maize from the field to where we live in the house, to the house, huh? or take it home. So now, what will happen is that once we take food, there is a, a means now of transportation that will be taking place, which is called cardiovascular system. As I said earlier, you need transport to take maize the, from the field to home, and we also need blood to take the food we have eaten to all part of the body so that we continue living. Now, uh, for me, the cardiovascular system, I take it as the Ministry of Transportation. It's uh, something that helps to move the food we have eaten and oxygen to all parts of the body. And if the food we have eaten now is dead, what will happen? So what will happen is that now, the body will be feeding on something which is dead. Your body will be feeding on something which is rotten. Your body will be feeding on something which is fermented. Because the blood is also manufactured from the food we eat. Remember, there is also part of the immune system that comes from the food we eat. You know, even if someone has an uh, immune disorder problem, something like there are some food that can help you to boost your immune system, to become healthy, to become strong, but now, imagine your colon is dead. Your colon is dead, which means the blood will also be dead. Everything that you are going to have, it will be dead. So your body will be ill, in short. Everything will be ill. Now, first of all, because the blood is loaded with toxin, you are causing now the liver to be tremendous, tremendously loaded with chemicals. You are affecting the liver because the liver now will be overworking. The liver will have more work to eliminate, the, uh, to eliminate acid, to eliminate the dirty inside there in the blood. It will give a problem to the liver. Remember, if you are suffering from the problem of liver, of liver problem, remember that it begins as all from the digestion system. The digestion system needs to be clean. Remember that the organs of elimination, these are the bladder, lungs, and the skin, be burdened because they will, uh, uh, because they will be uh, making sure to eliminate those impurities or to eliminate those toxins. Now, one now will begin to experience symptoms like sneezing, huh? coughing, sinuses, or skin lashes, huh? fever, even diarrhea, because you have allowed yourself, you have allowed your body to become the sewage the sewage system, but when you, the body is clean or when the colon is clean, we are well and healthy. If you want, let it be stagnant and what it will do, one, 